we're going to continue with naming. We've done ionic, now we're going to do covalent naming. Covalent naming, we're going to break into binary uh, molecules and acid molecules. So I'm going to pull this way over here. We're going to need quite a bit of room for the acid part. Okay, covalent. This is when we have a non-metal and a non-metal come together. We have what are called binary molecules. This is when you have just two non-metals, okay? Two non-metals that come together. And the naming is going to be similar to ionic with one exception. We have to tell the reader how many atoms there are. And here's the reason why. In ionic, we can cross down charges and figure out the subscripts, how many atoms there are to make a net zero charge for that compound. Well, in molecular, it's a different type of chemistry. The atoms share electrons and we don't know how many atoms there are, we have to be told. We can't predict it by just looking at the periodic table. So we use Greek prefixes to tell the reader the subscripts, how many atoms there are. So here you have it. Um, we're going to begin similar to ionic that you just say the first uh, element's name. So the first nonmetal, say the first nonmetal. And then number two, Similar, the second nonmetal, you change the ending to ide. Okay, so not the first one, but the second one, change the ending to ide. Um, so say second nonmetal, and we're going to change the ending to the ide. Now, before we go any further, here's the important part in using Greek prefixes. Use Greek prefixes before the elements. So before you actually say the element's name, you tell the amount. So it goes amount, element, amount, element. Uh, so use Greek prefixes before the element to indicate the number of atoms. And you will do this for every single element, the first one and the second one. There is one uh, situation when you don't. If the first element is only one, you don't have to say mono. If the second element only has one, you do have to say mono. And I'll show you a couple of examples of that. So let's begin with NF3. So I'm going to say the first nonmetal, nitrogen. Okay, now check it out. I have one N, so I didn't have to say mononitrogen because it's the very first element. Now I've got three of the fluorines. So I'm going to put the number first, try, and then I take that second element and change the ending to ide. So this is nitrogen tri fluoride. Nitrogen tri fluoride. Let's do a couple more. Check this one out, CO. So I say the first one, carbon. There's only one of them, it's fine. I don't have to use mono, carbon. But the second element, oxygen, I've only got one. So I have to tell the reader I've only got one. That is going to be monoxide. So mono and then oxide, we can drop one of the O's. Monoxide, carbon monoxide. Now contrast this. I know you've heard of carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide poisoning in houses, and I know that you've also heard about carbon dioxide. So I have my one carbon, it's the first element, don't have to say mono, but I've got two oxygens, so now we put dioxide. Let's do another one. Let's do P2O10, P2O10. So I'm going to say my first element, but I've got two, and I have to tell the reader how many there are. So this is going to be diphosphorus, and then I've got 10 of the oxygen, so that's deca. Now the A and the O together, I can drop the A, decoxide. Diphosphorus, decoxide. 